Hello, I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. This morning, I happened to notice an email from my old friend Jack Sarfati, the physicist who helped contribute a uh, section on physics and consciousness back in the 1975 edition of my book, The Roots of Consciousness. And as I've mentioned a few times before, uh, this is the first time uh, in a popular book that the idea that psychic phenomenon might be mediated by you know, what is known in physics as Bell's theorem, or sometimes is now commonly thought of as quantum entanglement, might be a way to explain psychic phenomena. Now, that explanation, it's certainly not dead, but it has now, many years later, we can say it is uh, far from accepted. Uh, I can say this, that a great deal of Sarfati's thinking along this area has been popularized in the book, How the Hippies Saved Physics. But this morning, the email from Jack Sarfati was in reference to a talk that had been given, I think it was in April, by another friend of mine, Hal Putoff, who is... Uh, now uh, an officer in an organization called Toward the Stars. And uh, Hal Putoff is uh, very well known for his research in remote viewing. He's also very well known for his theoretical work on uh, what is known as zero-point energy in physics, the energy that exists in a pure vacuum. Uh, Arthur C. Clarke even <laughs> praised this work very highly in, in one of his books. But the, the point of all of this is that Putoff commented on a video published in the New York Times last December in 2017. It's a video taken from a Navy jet fighter, a Hornet, uh, I believe taking off from the USS Nimitz aircraft carrier of a apparently UFO, an unidentified flying object. And Putoff's analysis of that video, and I'm linking to that video now for those of you who might be intrigued, Putoff's analysis is that this object uh, was not human made. It was, uh, he doesn't go so far as to say it's extraterrestrial. He just says, we don't have the technology to do what that object was videotaped doing. So, uh, now why is this significant in the context of Jack Sarfati? Uh, and here's where the story gets interesting because you see, uh, and this has been published uh, long ago in my book, The Roots of Consciousness. For people who follow the career of Jack Sarfati, this is a well-known story, but many of you watching this video may not know. When he was a youngster, I think around 13 years of age, growing up in Brooklyn, New York, on one occasion, he began receiving a phone call, I think maybe even a series of phone calls with a metallic sounding voice saying to him, this is a computer aboard a UFO and I'm contacting you because you are soon going to be in contact with people. You are going to become a scientist and you will be working with people who are going to help uncover these mysteries. So, subsequently, Sarfati has had an interest in physics and consciousness. He's been a gadfly. He's, <laughs> he's, Jack Sarfati has managed to insult or irritate almost everybody I know. Uh, and yet, most people, in spite of his sometimes abrasive personality, are kind of fond of the guy. I have to admit I am. I like Jack uh, because he's a provocateur in some ways. And he's been developing an unusual theory of consciousness. It is based on what he thinks of as, uh, I guess, what you could call the early Bohm, David Bohm, interpretation of quantum theory at a time when Bohm was working under the influence of Albert Einstein. And Einstein didn't really accept the uh, Copenhagen interpretation of quantum theory. He's famous for saying, God doesn't play dice with the universe. In other words, it's not just a statistical theory based on probabilities. Instead, Einstein wanted to see more of a mechanistic theory, and Bohm's early work was in that direction. And 
Sarfati is now picking up on this early work in which basically, and I'm not a physicist, I hope you understand, but I'm going to try and interpret this for you, that the uh, instead of saying, as the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum theory states, that it's the observer who collapses the wave function in quantum physics experiments, and so the Schrodinger probability cloud becomes defined now as specific observations. A particle is no longer spread over a probability field, but it's here or it's here. Now, the Copenhagen interpretation would say it's actually the observer who does that. Uh, the interpretation in the early Bohm work is that the particles are guided by a pilot wave. It's the pilot wave that forms the probability cloud. The particle was always a particle. And according to Sarfati, and this is where it gets very technical and I may be misspeaking, something about the pilot wave itself that is consciousness. Qualia would be the philosophical term for awareness of color, shape, form, sound, conscious awareness. It's built in deeply into the system according to Sarfati and he believes that he has a testable model a model which he would call popper falsifiable, meaning that uh, according to the great philosopher of science, Karl Popper, his notion of consciousness is precisely defined and can be tested and disproven, falsified in an experiment. And if his idea is correct, Sarfati claims we can use that knowledge to build conscious computers. Now, why would we want to build conscious computers? For space travel. You see, a human body will probably never be able to uh, travel to the stars. It'll take too long. Uh, the accelerations may be too great. The radiation in outer space. Our biological systems are probably just fine for traveling around our part of the uh, solar system, but when it comes to reaching out to traveling across the galaxy or to travel even to other galaxies, it may be necessary to build conscious robots in effect. Silicon-based systems that can sustain space travel in ways that our carbon-based bodies cannot. Sarfati even speculates that we could upload our consciousness into these silicon-based conscious systems so that we would, uh, <laughs> in effect, uh, completely change our physiology and therefore be capable of space travel. Now, most people would say that this idea is absurd on the face of it, and many of them would say so because of Jack Sarfati's abrasiveness towards them. For one thing, the uh, mainstream interpretation of quantum physics really is the Copenhagen interpretation, not the early work of David Bohm influenced by Albert Einstein. So. Uh, all of the work in Bell's theorem, as a matter of fact, and I've talked about it on earlier in presence segments, favors the uh, conventional interpretation of Bell's uh, theorem in quantum theory. Einstein objected to it. He says it would lead to spooky action at a distance, so that can't be. But in fact, it's now well confirmed. Spooky action at a distance is real. So, one reason for dismissing Sarfati's argument is precisely that, that the uh, Copenhagen interpretation of quantum physics does seem to be the uh, correct one. Uh, Sarfati argues vehemently that uh, Bohr, the uh, great physicist Niels Bohr, uh, <laughs> from Copenhagen, uh, uh, who is really the father of the Copenhagen interpretation, Sarfati believes that Bohr was wrong. And all I can say is this, if Sarfati is correct, if his interpret his precise definition of consciousness can be confirmed, and if that actually would enable us to build conscious computers like data in Star Trek, for example, 
Well, it opens up a vast realm of possibility. And I think some people are saying at least this about Jack Sarfati's work. He is sort of uh, an internet gadfly. As I've mentioned, he hasn't published anything in a mainstream physics journal for a long time. But people who are looking carefully at his work would say this, it's not obviously false. It does seem in theory to be testable. It may not work out, but at least in principle, it could be tested. And uh, it would open up a vast new realm of uh, applications, especially in the field of conscious computers, if true. So, it's worth paying attention to. And, of course, if now this recent UFO sighting, I think the original video goes back to about 2004, but still, and uh, that's relatively recent. Uh, and it's a very high quality video in the sense that the uh, it was captured on a um, jet fighter, a Hornet jet fighter with the most advanced uh, video and computerized tracking equipment for looking at potential uh, uh, enemy aircraft in the sky and, and so on. And Hal Putoff's analysis of it, I have to accept as being a very sophisticated interpretation based on the fact that I've known Hal Putoff for decades. He's a very serious scientist looking into these matters. So, in a way, you could think backwards about it and say, yes, UFOs are here. How did they get here? Uh, it would make sense if they're coming from extraterrestrial sources, which is the implication of uh, Putoff's analysis. If that's the case, or other dimensional, then the prospect that these UFOs are in effect being manned by conscious robots of some sort makes sense. And Sarfati's childhood recollections of having been contacted himself by conscious computers, which he holds to after many, many decades, also. Uh, begins to come into alignment with all of his other thinking. It's certainly food for thought, and I'll leave you with that. Thanks once again for being with me.